What's up guys, Josh here. Today we're gonna to show you how to draw, or how I draw, I'll draw a lion. Let's do a landscape format this time. Uh, here's the reference that I'm using. I can drop that in if you want to screenshot it up to you, but I can drop that into uh, the description probably with the link if I can find it. Um, let's get into it. Charcoal, charcoal drawing today. So we got our charcoal powder, general charcoal powder. I like to tone the page with this so I can have a nice base. It's not so white to work with. Oops. Good base to work on. I play it with my hands so I can get it on a lot of the piece. It's gonna be like here, mostly the eyes are gonna be like right there somewhere. Yeah, something like that. Start to give them this mane already, why not? And then, uh. Maybe we can erase a little bit of this, work on reverse, so that we can kind of establish where, uh, with this needed eraser, establish where the line will be and, and where um, there will be some highlights. Work big to small, you know? Don't worry about the details of the drawing until you've got a really solid foundation, which takes a little while and a little bit of effort. So the majority of the drawing, I think, is trying to figure out that good foundation of the piece proportionally and in terms of um, value. And then you could spend as long as you'd like just finalizing details. I think it's nicer when a piece is not completely detailed, but only detailed where it matters. So kind of see the nose is there, mouth is in this area, and then we'll have eye here and eye there around. All right, let's take this pan pastel. I dropped it into the laser one sec. I'll take this pan pastel and this uh, soft palette knife, dip it in there. I'm gonna do a lot of the drawing with this stuff because it's awesome. So it's called black pan pastel, and this is a soft palette knife. Um, for those wondering, I do sell my own art kit with all the materials that I'm using, except for the charcoal powder, that's not in there. but. You could find that at an art store. Um, but if you uh, visit madtruckle.com or click the link in the description or bio, it'll take you right to my shop where you could buy my artwork or the art materials that I work with. Unless you just wanna see what I use here and then find it for yourself at the store. Um, if this is what you would like to use, I think you can use any, any type of charcoal, any type of material that you want. Um, the principles are all the same. It's just the different techniques that uh, that are able to be accomplished with different types of material. If you want to work exactly the way I am working, um, I'll talk about the materials as I use them. So far, it's just been the charcoal powder, the soft palette knife, and uh, the pan pastel. This is BFK Reeves paper that I'm working on. Um, it's a it's a printmaking paper, so it's pretty high quality, full cotton. Um, it's actually a quarter sheet, so the sheets are four times bigger than this. But I tear them up into four sometimes to work at a smaller scale if I desire a smaller scale, like this piece. And um, and so let me get you up over here to the side just a little bit. Okay, so uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to make all of my drawings massive, 22 by 30s, which is what they, the sheets come at. This is the ear over here, so I want to make the shadow come behind it there. I really like this material here because I'm able to put down a lot of value, a lot of tone, without really having to deal with... Um, Blending and putting down charcoal and blending some more and putting down charcoal and uh, and then using line um, That way it's almost like a painting so I get a lot of the material out there quickly so I can Put the base down fast, but not only quickly, but also um, effectively in terms of uh, a little bit of expression Gives the piece a little bit of life a little bit of value changes and dynamic uh, gives it a little bit dynamic Which I if you know my art, I enjoy that. Um, let's start to find those planes of the faces. Some shadow here. 
Um, I'm not, I'm still looking at it very squinted, my reference, very squinted like because it lets me not be distracted by all the details. Because the details come later when you have a good foundational piece, like I said. Um, so I think like 80% 80, 80 of the piece can be done with this pan pastel here for me right now. You could also just use, a, if you don't have this and you don't have access to this, it's okay. Just use a, a, a chunk of charcoal, something like, something like this. And you could use the edge of it. And then establish some tones and values that way. You don't have to worry all that much about having the same materials. It's the same principle, but you gotta blend a little more with that. Which is always fun. Always fun to blend. That's where the whiskers are gonna be. The angle of the face is a little bit more complex than a straight on lion portrait, which I do sometimes. Um, I thought I changed the piece, I mean the, the video up a little bit from being a usual, um, let's move this down a little bit, portrait drawing. Because the portrait drawings could be a little bit repetitive of people. So why not do a portrait of a lion? I like lions, I think they're pretty cool. Pretty powerful animals, pretty majestic animals. Um, I think that's why biblically speaking, um, there's a lot of passages about the lion of Judah, God being compared to a lion or personified as a lion in some way because of uh, the majesticness, you know, it's just like king of the wilderness almost. But anyway, there's a drawing video. <laughs> Not a theological video. So, I'm taking the knee eraser once again, starting to lighten up the areas and carve out the form. I like to say carve out because it's like almost like you're working three dimensionally uh, with planes from bigger to smaller in terms of details, in terms of shapes and values. I'm working simultaneously with the values and the shapes. And, um, and squinting while I work so that it starts to read well. The better you have, uh, the better you have of a foundation, the more, the more effective and, and successful your drawing will be in the end. Um, losing these eyes a little bit, there we go. I like to work the, the entire piece all at once, kind of, and not just work on one section and then move on to the next section because then you can get a very unbalanced piece that way. Unless you're working with like a grid or something like that. But when you work with grids, I think it's a little bit like a, a little bit of a crutch. Um, so it's, it's really good to be able to learn how to draw without that. I mean, obviously like if you're making a piece on the side of a building, maybe it's best to project or use a grid or something like that, which is fine. I, I'll, I'll do that with really massive pieces to kind of speed up the process, but um, when it comes to actual drawing like this, the best thing you can do for yourself is to learn to draw by seeing um, and not by relying on um, a mathematical foundation of the piece. Let's get this pupil in here somewhere. Notice I didn't do the pupils right away because it's kind of hard to get them right because they're so small. Um, so since they're small, it's better to work down to them and not just try to establish them right away. I just get the whole shadow shape of the eye socket almost. And then I start to establish down a little bit more refined um, where things are in the piece. And sometimes they'll still move around. Even though I made a decision here, I might make a decision to kind of move this stuff around again later on, but that's okay. It's like, um, it's like sculpting. You're just constantly moving all the stuff around. And, uh, I like to shape the, the kneaded eraser into somewhat of a chisel and a chisel shape to be able to kind of carve out almost like I'm painting with an eraser by moving around material in large brush strokes almost. Uh, it's looking pretty cool. I can see that this side of the cheek here, which is right to the right of this eye line here, in the vertical sense, um, is coming out a little further, So, I'm, and it's also brighter. So let me pop that right out. And then the edge of the face right there is kind of visible. Um, it's starting to look like a little bit like a house cat. <laughs> it's okay, maybe we can make it a little bit scary, a little more daunting, a little more powerful. Um, Hmm. 
in reality, a lot of these tones and these values that we see are in the grays. They're not very black or white. Um, and when you recognize that when you're establishing your values, uh, it's so much more effective to make a piece look cohesive and look um, more real, a little bit more lifelike. Um, not necessarily real like, uh, like my intention isn't to do something photorealistic, but it's a my intention is to make it feel like it's alive, feel like it's dynamic. Um, I like to keep things a little bit more abstract, but um, there's also this balance of, uh, of creating a sense of motion, a sense of reality, um, like light is at play, you know? Like light is actually involved in the piece. I think that's powerful to kind of portray. Um, and so with that in mind, I, I think it's important to carve out, carve out where that light is hitting, carve out where that form is changing. Um, the fur on the face, it's kind of softer um, than like a normal portrait of a person. So you gotta keep that in mind with depending on the thing you're drawing. But it's all the same uh, principles. Also, I like to have the strongest changes in value, like the strongest changes of light and dark towards the center of the face, towards where I want the, the focal point to be because the eye is drawn to those con high contrast areas, those high detail areas. So I'm gonna keep the outside of the form very uh, ambiguous and kind of abstract and then refine everything down to the down to the face and, and make the face a little bit more detailed still uh still expressive still stylized almost but uh but a lot more concentrated and a lot more um careful um than than the rest of the piece and it'll have this like nice dynamic of guiding the eye towards the center of the piece If you guys are developing any questions that I don't go over in the video, uh, once it's completed, uh, please leave a comment and I'll try to get to it um, after this video. And when I'm uploading this video, I'm planning to uh, go through the other comments of, of my more recent uh, tutorials and see if I can be of help. Pushing and pulling these tones. I think this is a little bit too dark over here. So now I'm getting to the point where I'm going to, excuse me, sorry. I'm going to um, start to bring back those really dark shadows in the eyes, nose, and mouth and ear area, kind of around here. Um, I just wanted to get those um, nice gradations of lights and midtones out here first to know where everything is and that will allow me to now bring back blend it a little bit bring back this uh, this long charcoal pencil this medium charcoal pencil that I've sharpened with a knife and now I'm gonna bring back some of these darker deeper darker areas more detailed areas sharper contrast and darker values while well, still trying to maintain my accurate proportions by measuring things and angling things. I do it most of it in my brain now. Um, initially, when you're learning, it's important that you're doing it with like a, you could use like your pencil, be like, do this, or maybe measure something with size and then go back and forth with it and go back and forth from your reference. Um, I'm gonna come out with a tutorial and a, and a drawing course that'll kind of go over those things a lot in more detail. Um, but it's important to learn that um, so that you can practice seeing is what it is. Seeing proportion, seeing value. The better you can see the proportion value, the more effective your drawings are, the more successful they're going to be in the end. Um, so kind of keeping that in mind as you work is important. Um, I do that in my brain mostly and quickly now just because I draw often. Not because I have any special ability of any kind, like you guys have any of the abilities that I have, you guys can develop. It just takes, um, well, I mean, maybe some of you watching this video have better ability than me. But um, um, 
it does take for those that are developing it, it does take time. It does take a lot of energy and effort and concentration and um, um, intentional work, intentional uh, learning and skill building and time. Just like anything worthwhile, it takes time. But it's totally worth going into and practicing. And All right, let's see if I could get this eye looking pretty cool here. I'm gonna have to come in with a detail eraser or something like that. Maybe just shape down my needed eraser a little bit finer to get a better idea of what I'm doing here. There's gonna be some wrinkles here that the line's kind of making this growling face and it's not really con um, communicating that until I get those, that r those wrinkles or those aggressive wrinkles that are snarling on the nose. I don't know if that's the word snarling. Let's see if I can keep this under 20 minutes around that. But, um, whoa, that's a base. Neighbor's base, pretty intense. But I didn't dare make any of these uh, detail shadows until I had more of the rest of the piece actually uh, um, structured, you know? Like, I'm not attacking all of this with, uh, with, um, without a structure. then I might put details where you, they don't belong, and then I'm gonna have to work a lot harder to move those details around as I'm trying to manipulate the structure. Like you don't build a building without having the foundation underneath it first, right? So why would you make a drawing and start working on the cabinets before you even have the, <laughs> the walls in place, if that kind of makes sense. That's kind of what happens when people start working on details immediately. Um, it's kind of counterintuitive, at least in like the traditional sense of drawing kind of counterintuitive. Now obviously there's a top, lots of different types of drawings like you can have like I was talking about the grid format or the projection where you're doing like this hyper realism that's like beyond realistic. It's beyond what the naked eye can see. That's what hyper realistic means. Not just super real, that's just realism. But um, um, in those senses, it's a little different. That's a whole different art form, which takes a lot of patience, a lot of time, and it does take a lot of skill, but uh, it's not it's not my interest all that much. I do appreciate a nice hyper realistic drawing, but I think there's something human about and not printer like about having expressive pieces, expressive and and hum, human humane uh, and, like mistakes and and um, dy dynamic expressive strokes through a piece while still ba balancing like this recognizable form and this uh, sense of light and shadow that I think is just beautiful to, to accomplish. It's hard, it's a hard thing to accomplish and they struggle with it day in, day out, but, but it's totally worth that, in my opinion. Um, this is looking pretty cool, I think. Very dynamic. Let's take this uh, blending stump. It's just a dirty old blending stump. Wipe all these things down to kind of create a more, more of a gray tone because I don't want things to be too black and white. I want them to be kind of gray. Now uh, now we've lost some of those highlights in the face, but that's okay. I'm gonna take my needed eraser, bring them back out by shaping this chisel. And then um, pulling the lights little by little. I might even come back with a white piece, oh, a piece of white charcoal or white uh, pastel pencil, and then start to add in some of those really bright details to kind of give it that next dimension. Um, let me see if I could do that in a little bit. I, I really don't usually recommend using a white on on a white paper with charcoal, but when you have something like kind of dynamic like this, and then you could add those popping glass details with the white charcoal and the white chalk. Um, I think that it kind of could be effective sometimes as long as it's controlled because you're going to get a different color and temperature white 
um, with that than the white of the paper, which could be a little bit confusing, especially when they're the same value, the value, um, um, value, value, I don't know how to say the value, the same value, when they're the same value, like if you got the white of the page here, you also have white of the pencil, um, it might look a little confusing because one of them is going to look a little bluish, one of them is going to look a little warmer naturally, uh, depending on what materials you're using. And that's why I kind of don't recommend that all the time, except for certain situations or if you're really controlled with what you're working or if you have charcoal down on the entire paper, this is kind of closer to that. I have charcoal on most of the paper. Not in all my drawings I do this, but um, this will allow me to be able to do that effectively, I believe. Um, I'm getting to that time limit there. Let me put down a couple more, what I think are key strokes. And then, and then I can come in with the, let's show a little bit more of this main here. Here. Some of it's in shadow, some of it is not. Okay, now I'm going to take the white pencil, if I could find one, and my mess of things. Um, found one. It's not very sharp. Let me see if I have a knife to sharpen it. Maybe not. It's okay. I think it's sharp enough. I could use the edge. No problem. Um, highlight there on the eye. Highlight here-ish on the eye. Let's get a little bit brighter here. Just be very sparingly. Don't make it too obvious that you have white on here. Like a crazy amount of white or anything like that. The eyes are some thing that actually draw in the attention of most people. So I want to make sure that they're, they capture you for the sake of the piece. Um, some brightness is going to be around here contrast of the nose and then uh we could actually use it to make some of those white whiskers coming out here still subtle i'm not pressing too hard i don't want them to be completely overwhelming the piece which is easy to do by accident with these white that's why i don't recommend it all the time unless you know how to be subtle with it I need to know where to put that um let's make those nice and sharp in the teeth this one on this one uh, you can Kind of hint at these little inner teeth in between the canines. Or, I don't know if they're canines, it's a cat, so. I don't know exactly how to, what kind of teeth they would be. Okay, uh, there's a little bit of wetness on this tongue here, and I'm gonna kind of hint at that a little bit. Cool. Uh, there's a sharper edge here on the dark part of the mouth where it kind of goes into the chin and the white hair of the chin. So let's kind of make that happen a little bit. And some more highlights here on the snarling part of the face. Inside of the nostril. And just a tiny bit on Wet the nose, make the nose look a tiny bit wet, a little bit, not something crazy, but um, I think this is pretty cool. I think the piece is kind of successful, uh, pretty successful. I, I, I like it. I think if I took longer on it, it would, it would be a little better, but um, but I think the speed on which uh, I tackle this piece will allow for it to be a little bit more dynamic than, than usual. So, some details here. And... This is the lion drawing. Um, I hope you guys learned something from this and I hope that you guys enjoyed the, the process. Um, let me know what you guys think. You guys are the best. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the process. Love you all. I'll talk to you soon.